Welcome back to the channel everyone. Today I want to talk about Jim Cramer being scared of Citadel and how he's not allowed to criticise Citadel or expose their crimes. I also want to give you a professional data analyst's input into the Say Technologies vote count. So stay tuned and let's make some money. But before I dive into the video, I just want to give a massive shout out to the 3,600 of you that have currently dinged that notification bell, because you guys are always the first to watch a new video as soon as it's released. So guys, be sure to drop a like down below, subscribe to the channel and ding that notification bell if you haven't already, so that you don't miss another video just like this one. Also guys, just a quick one before I dive in with the key information. If you didn't already know, I'm currently holding a $600 Visa gift card giveaway. I'm drawing the winner on the 28th of August and to be in with a chance of winning $600, all you have to do is become part of the team and join the Patreon linked in the description below. And now I wanna dive straight in with the key information. So, Jim Cramer admitting years ago that you're not allowed to criticize Citadel or expose their crimes. Shh. Welcome to Wall Street Confidential. Here with me, Jim Cramer, as always. Good morning, Jim. Good morning. Uh, your piece on Citadel, very interesting. How conclusive... Citadel's you... absolutely in great shape. It is, but how conclusive great... no, I just want to make be? that point right up top. Okay. They're in great shape. As a matter of fact, I, I want to throw money at them. If I were allowed to put money with them, anybody who's down 35%, the most important thing to do is throw mm -hmm. money at them. So when I see the New York Times with stories about... Well, you know, the they're health... in great shape. What? Why? Well, because Besides they said the so. They said they're in great shape. But so Citigroup said they were in great shape. Uh, well, a lot matter. of banks Citadel's said they were different. in great shape. See, this is how it works. Yeah. See, this is the way it's played. And guys like me can't even say anything other than they're in great shape. Yeah. Because then I don't get in trouble. Yeah. Right? See, when you report on an outfit like Citadel, the important thing is not get in trouble. That's why I continue to tell you they're in great shape. Now, if I told you they're in great shape 50 times, what's the takeaway? They're Thank you. Great. Yeah, they're in great shape. Yeah, they're in great the shape. The end. See, because you can't talk about a citadel you, you can't because if you say they're not in great shape uh he will say prove it okay i've already said we're in great shape and if you say he is in great shape and someone listens to you well that's dangerous too so these are uh these are crises of confidence mm -hmm. and um you know look there isn't anyone that i won't take on citadel's in great shape all right. I still don't know if I have a conclusion there. Really? Down 35%. Would, who would you rather go with? Here's a good question, a well, Q&A. Who would you rather go with, a manager who's up 10% or a guy who's down 35 Up 10%. Why? Unlimited well, opportunity. Okay. Unlimited opportunity for, to get involved well, with a guy who's got big redemptions, who everyone's worried well, about, who, who says he's got a lot of cash but is also dead. That's the opportunity of a but, lifetime, but isn't Jim, it? But Jim, right now, everyone's And he's the best. But, you forgot he's the best. Can I say one thing? Yeah. Fear. When you see down 35%, then it's going to go down 50%, Farnoosh, 70%, people Farnoosh, are going to flee. That conference call was very bullish. She said things are good, and the press picked that up. I am thinking what you're doing is you're standing you're standing it all on its head. You're saying that good money managers who have done well mm -hmm. and preserved capital should get the money. And I am saying I have read the press clippings, and Griffin has said, I don't believe that, you know, down 35 isn't bad. The opportunities are once in a lifetime. I uh, don't believe that there's any real redemptions. I actually have cash even though I'm levered. Fundamentals are sound. All right. Fundamentals are sound. I'm gonna hold you know, let me give you an example. Just one more thing. Sure. Uh, right now, the Phillies are leading three to one, right, mm -hmm. over the Tampa Bay Rays. Who would you rather be? Citadel in the Rays, okay, or someone who's up 10% in the Phillies? And the answer is obviously the Rays, right? Because they could come back. Um. Oh, when you, you mean when you put it like that, it's... It dawns on you more yeah. clearly who you want to be. See, when you talk sports, I get it. Oh, because, you know, to me, the Rays are the opportunity. When you're back by 3-1, the odds are really slim that you'll come back. Don't you want to put the money on the Rays? I'm from Philadelphia. Well, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, when you analogize to another mm -hmm. situation, it all becomes very clear. And that's why Citadel is the greatest. All right, thank you very much, Jim Kramer. This is Wall Street Confidential, only on thestreet.com TV. So guys, unfortunately, as I've been speaking potentially negatively towards Citadel, it looks like I might be disappearing at some point in the future, but hopefully not. And until then, I'll continue bringing you more AMC related videos. Speaking of which, I also have a professional or professor, PhD and data analyst's opinion on the Say Technologies vote count. As a data analyst and AMC ape, it was my duty to do my part. The true value of current shares, including synthetic shares, falls within this range, 1.5 billion shares to 5.5 billion shares, with a 99% confidence rate. 
I extrapolated the number of AMC synthetic shares using advanced statistical software based on the recent say shareholder vote and three indicators, sample size, variability in population and confidence level. Assumptions, 63,000 retail investors voted. Importantly, this is not randomized, so it might be biased and we should control for that as in people with more shares had more tendency to vote and people with less shares tended potentially not to vote because they thought their vote wouldn't count for much. 68 million shares voted for Timothy B and 4.1 million retail investors. Now I think personally there's likely to be more than 4.1 million retail investors at this point. Yes, many apes could have paper handed back at the start of June, but I also think there's been many new apes that have been coming on this journey in June and July and now August as well. There are three methods of extrapolation, linear, S-curve and mixed mode extrapolation. I tried all three and got almost the same result. In a perfect world of statistics, assuming all people who logged their shares voted for Timothy B's question on dividend, the total value of number of shares would be 4.42 billion, but we have to control for a few things. Not all people who voted voted for Timothy B's question on dividends. I personally didn't vote for that because companies with debt cannot offer a dividend, but I later logged back in again and voted for that question because it was the right thing to do to log my shares. If 10% didn't vote for that question, then the total number of shares would be 4.92 billion. If 20% didn't, the total number of shares would be 5.53 billion. But it doesn't matter because we assume everyone who logged their shares voted for that question to be conservative. So there is a variability in population and it's not randomized, so we also have to control for that. Assuming people with more shares had more tendency to cast a vote, so we dilute the number of participants to control for small accounts by 100% and 200% just to be sure. If we dilute by 100% to control for small account retails, it means instead of 63,000 investors, 126,000 investors logged 68 million shares. And a 200% dilution assumes 189,000 investors logged only the same 68 million shares. Therefore, it keeps the total number of shares that were voted on the same, but massively increases the actual voters. This therefore forces down the average number of shares per voter. Instead of 1,100 shares per voter, you're now looking at say 300 shares per voter, as you've forcibly reduced it by increasing the number of voters. The reason why she's done this is because obviously at the moment, it's not a randomized sample and therefore people with more shares are more likely to vote. So to control that, she's basically just included tons and tons of people that have zero shares or that maybe have only one share and still counted their vote. So with 100% dilution, the total shares out there, including synthetics, would be 2.2 billion shares. And with 200% dilution, the total shares out there, including synthetics, would be 1.5 billion shares, the most conservative estimate in the range. As I was curious to see how a 300% dilution would look like, it turns out even if we assume 252,000 retail investors only logged the same 68 million shares, which is very unlikely by any statistical standard, but out of curiosity, we would still have 1.1 billion shares out there. So this puts an end to the discussion on variability in population, period, checkmate. So therefore this removes the randomization element of it. Yes, it's more likely that people with more shares are more likely to vote, Therefore, you can bias it and forcibly reduce the average by including loads and loads of non-voting people or just including loads and loads of people with only one share. If I wanted to do a 95% confidence interval, which is more common for these types of analysis instead of 99%, the true average would lie between 1.8 billion to 4.2 billion. My statistical gut tells me synthetics are three to four times the flow. This is crazy. So therefore, even with a professional or professor PhD level data analyst, it still seems that there's a vast number of synthetic shares in the AMC flow. Hopefully we've given Adam Aaron, AMC, C Technologies and the SEC enough evidence to prove that there is indeed synthetic shares, with only 1% of apes making up over 10% of the flow. Clearly it must be obvious there are mass amounts of synthetics. Hopefully the SEC will be able to use this data, perform their own statistical analysis and determine once and for all if they think there are synthetics in the float and force a share recall. Yes, I know that technically only the lenders can be the ones to force that share recall, but I'm sure the SEC can also put some pressure on it and make the lenders force the share recall. If the SEC and the lenders did force a share recall, it'd mean that every share that's been lented out and shorted would have to be bought back and returned. 
This would obviously cause the AMC squeeze, as it would mean that all shorts have to cover their positions all at the same time. I also wanted to give you an update on the sheer amount of speaking fees that Treasury Secretary Jeanette Yellen has received over the last few years. Somebody's actually put together a change.org petition for her to resign immediately. If you do think that Treasury Secretary Jeanette Yellen should resign, I'll leave the link in the description to the change.org petition for you to sign. I do think it's very sketchy that she received such large sums for speaking fees in 2019 and 2020, specifically from Citadel, Citibank and many others as well. I don't think the data of her 2021 speaking fees have yet to be released, but when they are released, I would love to see what kind of speeches she's been giving this year and how she's been paid for them, especially the kind of remuneration that she's been receiving from Citadel, potentially Melbourne Capital and any others that are also currently shorting AMC and GameStop. Guys, be sure to let me know down in the comments below what you think about Jim Cramer being scared of Citadel and the data analyst thoughts on the true number of shares in issue. Guys, I also wanted to announce that instead of partnering with Webull, I've now partnered with Moomoo. They offer free level 2 data, great charting, news, company fundamentals and figures. They offer absolutely everything. So if you do want to buy some shares but haven't yet signed up for a trading platform, be sure to sign up with Moomoo where you can get four free shares worth up to $3,350, linked in the description below. Also guys, if you're based in the UK, be sure to sign up with Free Trade again, linked in the description below, to get some free shares. And as always guys, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out some of my others. Alternatively, subscribe to the channel and ding that notification bell, because that way you'll be alerted when I upload a new video. Cheers!